Well, welcome to another look back at great times with Sussex County Cricket Club as we take a look back at a memorable match this weekend as we build up to a rerun of the 2008 Pro 40 finale to the season where Sussex took on Nottinghamshire in a winner-takes-all game. Uh, and a key part of that day, and indeed a key part of that time with Sussex, after 12 brilliant years with the club with uh, Murray Goodwin. And I'm glad to say that Murray has caught up with us uh, now. In these bizarre times at Muzzer, uh, how have you been faring during lockdown? Well, not too bad, thanks, Woody. And thanks for having me uh, on, on the show. I mean, I, I've got a huge spot for Sussex. I mean, it's a lot of my cricketing life, um, you know, so I hold it really close to my heart. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's weird times. So we've been sort of locked down here in, in Australia, like you guys in England, but I've still be going to work. I, I work in real estate, so I help people uh, sell their properties. Um, but I've also been part-time cricket coaching, but it's, it's winter now. Um, and so I haven't done a lot of the cricket coaching because it's end of season and uh, we're going into the winter sports and that's hopefully getting underway. But um, basically... I've just been, um, yeah, playing a bit of golf and just sort of help coaching my, my two boys who are coming through on the cricket side, uh, even though it's out of season. And, yeah, just doing some cricket consulting work uh, on, on the, um, yeah, batting side of things. Now, I look back, the day after you finished with Sussex, we spoke and we sat on the balcony of the committee room. I don't know if you remember, but I watched back the footage last night. And at the time I said to you, obviously very close to that time, but what would you remember of your time with Sussex? And you said, obviously, I think the amount of trophies that were won, um, having had a fair bit of time since then to think, and obviously all these years later, um, what are your fondest memories looking back? Yeah, well, my fondest memories are just having fun with the boys, not only on the field and winning trophies. I mean, we had a successful era, but we had such a bunch of good blokes uh, from the young guys coming through at the time, like Matty Pryor, Tim Ambrose, these sort of guys. And then you obviously had your, your Mushies and your Chris Adams, James Kirtley, Rob Martin Jenkins, Jason Lurie. And, you know, we had um, obviously uh, Rana Naveed. We had... A brilliant team, um, you know, Mark Davis, you know, was a brilliant spinner, but he couldn't really get a game because of Mushy, you know, and so it was tough. Uh, we, we had that depth. And then, you know, my fondest memories are obviously winning trophies, uh, but having fun with the guys and celebrating your wins uh, was the special moments for me. And I think that's probably why... Sussex is so close to my heart because I had such a good time then. Yes, I did well personally, but as a team, you know, there, there were teams in, in the first division who feared coming down to, to play against us because they knew they were in for a battle. And over your first class career, I think it was just over 23,000 runs overall. And the best part of 15,000 runs came for, for Sussex. So it was a key part of your career. And of course, I think it actually started, you originally only came for one season. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I, I remember replacing Michael Bevan um, and he was having a, well, an Ashes series uh, in 2001. And I just put my name in the hat and Dean Jones, the ex-Australian uh, cricketer, said, look, put your name in the hat with this agent and got in contact with Sussex. And... Yeah, I remember playing against England, and I don't know if this had any effect whatsoever, but I played against England in um, South Africa in a one day. And after that um, game, I was having a beer with uh, Chris Adams and a couple of the English guys who are on that tour. And I don't know whether that, you know, Chris must have said, no, look, this guy, let's give him, him a shot or what have you. Uh, I had no idea um, really where Sussex was. Um, and I had no idea about the history. Uh, uh, and I certainly didn't ever think that I would make as many runs as Michael Bevan. You know, I mean, Michael Bevan was, you know, playing for Australia at the time. And I was only playing for Zimbabwe. And I, I thought to myself, wow, this is big shoes to fill. So my whole philosophy about going to Sussex was 
you're on a one year contract, give it your best, have fun, make an impression on and off the field. But the, my, my biggest thing that I wanted to do was have fun and, and make sure that I'm playing to my standards and trying to keep my standards as high as possible. And if I do well, great. If I don't, well, so be it. I've, I've had a bit of um, a taste of county cricket. And that's how I looked at it. And for us to win the second division and the year before them to be last, I think, in the second division um, was a massive turnaround. And, yes, uh, you know, guys like Mark Davis were there on, on that, um, that first year of mine. So it was, it was a wonderful time you know, to know that the club was so passionate about making that transition to first division. And yes, you know, obviously I was proud of, of what I achieved. And, and in that time, you, you've actually kind of summed that up quite well in the fact that I think a lot of people that weren't around at the time didn't realise um, how much of a struggle it was in the late 90s for Sussex. And in that, that period, there was a massive transformation. Uh, and of course, you very much played your part in that which took us through to 2003 and of course by then how things turned on their head. Yeah, well, you know, it was incredible. I mean, 2003 obviously was the first time ever winning it, but um, I'll never forget, right, leading up towards that last game, um, I remember getting hit in the head by um, Peter Martin from Lancashire and I remember bleeding and I had stitches and I've still got the cut here, uh, but I got hit on the helmet. I was playing a pull shot and it hit me on the helmet and it cut me. And I remember we needed a certain amount of uh, points um, to try and win the championship, right? But the more points we got batting wise uh, made it a lot easier when we had our last game at home against Leicestershire. So I remember batting and I, I went off the field and um, I, I basically bound, managed my head up and I was bleeding and I was trying to see out of this eye and it was really hard. I managed to make a, over 100 in that and we got the extra bonus point batting wise and um, I came off, I eventually had to have stitches and what have you. But that was a huge thing for us as, as a team because we wanted to minimise the points because you never know with the, the rain or anything like that what can happen and it made us sort of go into the last game a lot uh, happier obviously we needed less points um, but yeah it was just it was a huge thing uh, to, that that was crucial for us you know just to get that one extra batting point or you know that extra bowling point uh, especially in the first innings um, it was was massive but to lead up um, and then play that final game uh, at Hove yeah I didn't I didn't realize I mean I always you know heard the hype but I didn't realize how much it meant to so many people at the club you know I didn't realize that Sussex was the oldest club and never won the first division champion through the club and I'll never, ever forget before that four-day game, um, I remember in the huddle, we all got in the huddle and I said to the guys, I said, guys, if we have the attitude that we can go out there and be the one who can hit the winning runs, get that point to cross us as champions, uh, I reckon... That is the attitude we should have. And then I said, I want to be that man. And if we all have that attitude, I reckon we'll win this game and we'll be champions. And as it so, so happened, uh, I managed to be the one to hit the runs. You know, that was just, it, it just was surreal. I mean, at the time, I didn't really think of it. I didn't think back to what I said before the game and it happened. Um, but then also, yeah, just to pause the game and we had my photos. I thought, geez, what is this? You know, what are we doing? We've got to win this game. Uh, even though we had got enough points to win the championship, I just, I felt a little bit as though we were disrespecting the opposition. That's how I felt. But I was, I was so pumped. And then I'll never forget when we carried on batting and batting and batting, um, I went off and I said, guys, do you want to declare? Do you want to declare? And Morsey and uh, Chris said, no, nah, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
I didn't realize what, what the um, record was. And then I came off at tea time or something like that. And they said, um, look, just carry on uh, because for a, for a bit longer. And then when I hit the, um, reached the record, the whole crowd was like cheering. And then when I passed the record, they were just going ballistic. And I'm thinking, I was like, oh, and, and then I forget who was batting with me at the time. They said, yeah, mate, you've, you've got the record. And I went, oh, couldn't believe it. So it was one of those things where I was, I suppose, a little bit vague. And my headspace was not about the record. It was about getting enough runs so we could declare and then bowl him out and, and just get off and celebrate. That was my whole focus. And, and yeah, it was, it was an amazing, amazing time. You mentioned there, um, obviously, talking about Chris Adams, Peter Moores was a massive part of that as well. And, of course, Peter's still involved in the game very much now. Um, they were key, key men at the time. Obviously, Mushy came in as well. There was a lot of people perhaps in those sides that perhaps didn't get the mentions that they deserve. But those guys I've mentioned, obviously, in the end, key factors with your career. Oh, 100%, Graham. I mean, Morsey was brilliant. I mean, the... the the times over county cricket, it can be very hard work day in, day out. You know, you've got to keep your standards high. You've got to keep your energy high. And at times I just, Morsey's energy was brilliant. I, I At times I used to say, Morsey, you're just too energetic. Cause you know, you have days where you're just feeling a little bit tired and jaded and you know, you just, you just want to relax, but he'll say, come on, come on, get up. And I get that. I, after you know playing a few years, I mean, this was only my second, third year of of county cricket, so it was it was really good for me. Um, Chris is obviously excellent in in how he uh, led the troops, but I, the thing I take my hat off to Chris was more the off field stuff, how he handled things. Um, it, on on field, I thought he was good. Don't get me wrong, uh, but off the field, I thought he was excellent. Um, he he handled the press and he handled the public. Very, very well. Um, but, yeah, we had some really good players. You know, I was just fortunate to be a part of that because you had guys who chipped in. I'll never forget a game. I'm pretty sure it was that year where Mark Davis made 100 at Taunton. Um, and I, I remember that. And we needed those runs. We needed to break the back of them. And I remember that. And guys like him, only playing a handful of games, but he chipped in and, and did that. And, and that was what the team was about. We had other guys who only played certain games, you know, Matthew uh, Innes, no, not Matthew Innes. Um, Kevin, yeah. Kevin Innes. And Kev was brilliant at times. You know, he'd come on and take a few crucial wickets. Um, yeah, so it was, it was little things like that. Uh, I felt that really chipped in, you know, Robin Martin Jenkins had his times. That, but it was how I would say that the depth of the squad was obviously down to Morsey and, you know, Chris would have had a part of that, but the club did well there, I, I believe. Well, that a, a fascinating uh, insight into uh, that stage of um, Sussex, but of course, moving on, highlights were to come as well with the white ball because strangely at that time, despite the side, the success perhaps wasn't there, but by 2006, there was that fantastic day out at Lord's uh, Murray where we beat Lancashire. And of course, Lancashire at the time, there were so many great tussles between the two sides. And, you know, I remember a couple of um, four day matches, which was the closest I think I've seen county cricket to test match standard with the standard of that play. But they really were an enemy at the time. And, uh, and what do you remember of, of that day out at Lord's? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just before we won that um, first division final, well, again, it was the game. Um, it was a it was a tough, tough game because Lancashire. We always saw them as the guys who the big club who had all the money, a bit like Surrey, have all the money. Have generally a very big staff and a a lot of depth. And for us to be boxing with these guys who have got the the big budgets and um, you know the big names, we used to say. Well, it was excellent and it was, it was a real, I suppose, a bit of a grudge match at times. Uh, certainly from my perspective, I felt 
I had to lift my game, you know, because I would always like look at someone like Stuart Law and think, well, what a quality player. I've got to be matching him uh, as Sussex's player, you know, and there were, there were many others, but I felt that game at Lords was, was nail biting. I mean, James Kirtley did brilliantly. We had a little bit of luck with Stuart Law getting inside edge um, and the umpire giving him out. Okay. That was crucial. But what, what was brilliant there was Mushy bowled, I reckon, 10 O's for less than 30 or about 30. And he might have only got one wicket. Uh, not many. But he held it. And I tell you what, they could have easily got a couple of boundaries off him and we would have been right on the back foot. But they didn't take that. We had this, this pressure cooker situation. Someone like Dominic Cork, who was in there, who's the Mr. Confidence and sometimes bordering on, on real arrogance, but he, he was a, as quiet as a mouse there. And so that was the pressure that was ha having, um, happening at that time. And I'll never forget uh, that when we got that last wicket, um, just the elation, the crowd, everything like that, because it was such a low scoring game, and we, I think we, uh, I think we won the toss. I can't remember um, if we won the toss or, or not, but it was overcast and it was doing a fair bit. Um, and we thought, geez, like hopefully it's still doing it in the afternoon with the ball. And fortunately, we had a little bit of luck, but we worked harder. Now our boys bowled beautifully and we fielded well. We took our catches. I think we've got a run out as well. And yeah, it was, it was an amazing feeling. I mean, to play at Lords and win that game. I'll, I'll never forget carrying that trophy around, looking at all the spectators and what it meant to everyone, um, let alone myself as a player. But what a special, special day. Fantastic times and great memories. And, and we'll be seeing that in another episode. Um, but just before we come on to 2008, just want to ask you, um, probably should have asked you at the start, Averaging 43 at Test Cricket, uh, obviously you only played for Zimbabwe for a couple of years, but got an awful lot of games in, in that time. I think it was five centuries across ODI and Test Match at format. Um, did you have any regrets about not carrying on that? Or in the end, that decision made you the player that you were? Look, I, I personally feel that... Um... I was a better player, not only for coming to Sussex, but I think maturity-wise as well, okay? So if I was playing international cricket uh, from when I started Sussex for another five years, let's say, when, you know, while I was at Sussex, I believe my record would have got better because I felt that I learnt a lot playing county cricket um, about myself. Um, I just... <laughs> I suppose at the end of the day, I do, always in the back of my mind it thinks, should I stay back in Australia and, and nutted it out and played first class cricket and try to give it a go? Yeah, but you know, my heart was with some of my friends who were playing with Zimbabwe, and they kept, we always hoped that the the country would make itself right, and there was a lot of talk that it was going to be. The elections were going to happen. Mugabe's not going to um, prevail, but history shows that, uh, yeah, it was all rigged and it, it happened that way. So I went back to Australia and I was doing the Sussex thing and I was happy with that. And I nearly did um, go back to Zimbabwe for one of the World Cups. I think it was the 2000 and the one in South Africa, 2003. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and or it might've been the 2007 one or one of the, one of the two. It, it was one of them where I was going to go back and, play for him because I know um, they were asking me, but then the board must have had a rethink because they didn't want uh, another guy to come and take up one of their local spots or whatever, um, who's been out of the country, you know? So I sort of basically thought, right, that's probably the, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So I stayed at Sussex and um, I just know that I learned so much about my game that I felt I was going to be, I would be a way better cricketer at international level. Uh, and of course, for people that aren't aware and, uh, and don't remember those times around the 2000s, Zimbabwe actually had, you know, you had some really good colleagues within that side because the flowers were around. 
uh, Johnson Street, Campbell, all sorts of names that, you know, you'd have been around. Yeah, well, we, the only team we never beat was Australia uh, in the top end. Um, but yeah, we beat every other team uh, in one day as all test match. Um, so, well, we never beat South Africa in a test match, but um, it was one of those things where we beat them in one day. As. Good stuff. Right, let's get back to uh, Sussex. Let's move on to 2008 then. And we were joking just before, not actually the greatest of seasons. I think the championship, um, the last couple of games, you scored a century against Yorkshire, um, which got the points to keep Sussex in the division. Um, the T20 was a disappointment that season. And again, really bizarre because the squad that we had, when you look back at it, it really should have specialised in the white ball game. But the success was to come in the, in the Pro 40. What do you remember of that era of the club? Yeah, I do remember that. And I remember that innings actually against Yorkshire because that was crucial. Because um, I'll, I'll never forget, uh, I kept saying to myself, right, I'm going to have to t take some of the strike here when, when some of the lower order guys came in. Um, to try and get us over the line. But it was, without being selfish, I, I was just thinking uh, in terms of like those guys, like not backing them. I, it's not meant to mean, mean like that. What I'm saying is my whole focus was those points, okay? To get those points so we can get safe from relegation. That was it. And uh, yeah, I, I know that there was a fair bit of focus on that from my perspective. But it was a weird one, like T20, we were jumbling, uh, uh, I remember we were jumbling, we had a few injuries, we, had, we were jumbling, you know, certain players and in certain positions and stuff like that. And it wasn't settled. Most of the time when we've done well, especially in white ball cricket, we've had a settled, um, I suppose, clear role, a clear role of what uh, the players are, have got to do. And we try to do that, don't get me wrong. But it just didn't gel. And, yeah, that, um, that particular season, I suppose, once, once you don't have the success in 2020 cricket, you've got to focus on that, that 40 over cricket. And, um, yeah, because I think on that same day, my friend Grant Flower playing for Essex, they won the second division uh, when we won the Pro 40 because he, he called me and he said, geez, uh, amazing innings type thing. And I remember that vividly... Um, you know, leading up to that game at Trent Bridge, how that was always going to be like the final. You know, Knott's had the England boys back. It was, yeah, it was a, going to be a proper game. Obviously, talking about that championship innings, um, you were in good form. And, and leading up to that last game at Trent Bridge, you scored two valuable half centuries in what I think were televised day-night games, one against Middlesex and one against Lancashire. And I think we'd lost to Hampshire in the Pro 40. So it was important that we won those two games and you got Sussex home on both of those. What with that and that century in the championship, you were obviously in great form going into that final match. Yeah, look, I, I you know, you're only as good as your next innings, but I, I did feel good. I remember that. Um, but I felt when we were chasing 224, I think it was, or 245, something like that. 226 uh, they got, yeah, 226. 226, was it? Yeah. Um, I remember that wasn't going to be easy because the ball was turning quite a bit. And I remember we actually, like James Kirtley and the boys were getting the, the ball to reverse a bit at um, Trent Bridge. So I knew it was quite an abrasive wicket. And with Graham Swan, Samit Patel, I thought that these guys are going to be tough work. And... Uh, yeah, I, I think when when I was sitting there on the sideline, and I think I batted maybe four or five. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I think it was five. I ended up going in, but yeah, I remember Chris running. Oh, I, I went in there, and uh, like I, we were three for not many, um, and I'm sure I batted five. And and I I was batting with Chris at the time, uh, Adams, and. He was finding it hard to, to play Graham Swan because he was turning a long way. And I said, mate, I said, use your sweep, use your sweep. And he played a sweep shot, and I remember that. But, um, you know, he rotated the strike and it was, it was good. But then he tried to run down and got bowled. And then Robin Martin Jenkins and then Hoppo and whatever. It, it just sort of steamrolled. And, and as, it, as it turned out, um, I ended up batting with Muhammad Sami. That, that um, you know, that last... Well, it's, it seemed a short time, but it actually was 
about 10 overs. Yeah. We needed 120. I'll never forget this. We, we needed 10 and over um, of the last 12 overs. We needed 120. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. You know, we had James Kirtley still to come in. Uh, and I was feeling the pinch. I thought, how the heck are we going to do this? But I just said to my other Sammy, I said, mate, I said, if it's off your stumps, look to hit it hard in the gaps. If it's on your stumps, just try and try and keep it out type thing. Okay. I said, I will be taking most of the strike um, if it works out that way. And um, as it turned out, um, was yeah, I was, I was facing Mark Elam and because I'd walked at Mark Elam and I was batting outside at the crease, Reed came up to the uh, stumps, Chris Reed. And he said, that's a tough ask, 10 and over. And this is when there were about 10 overs to go, needing 100. And I said, one, one way or the other, Reedy, whatever happens, we'll enjoy a beer together. Okay? And he laughed and he goes... Mate, he says, I don't like your chances, right? I said, nor do I, and I just laughed. And uh, as it turned out, um, very next ball, I actually, uh, Mark Ellen bowled this one, it was going to be a Yorker, and I ramped him for four. And uh, I looked at Reedy just out of the corner of my eye like this, and I just gave him a little wry smile. As it came down... Um, you know, it was one of those situations where Muhammad Sami played brilliantly. He was keeping the odd ball out. I was trying to protect him as much as possible, but he tried to swing when it was outside at the line of the stumps and he got the odd inside edge and the outside edge and what have you. But yeah, we were, we had a bit of luck. It was a fantastic game. I think you almost understate the situation. I think um, it was, it was two, two, six that Knott's got, I think Patel got 78 Kirtley got three for 39 within their innings. And when Sussex went in, I think Yards opened with Pryor and Yards got 50 odd. And from 87 for two, so in a 40 over game in a really good position, next thing we were 130 for eight. It was, it was some effort. Your contribution was 87 off 64 and uh, Sammy's was 32 off 25, which when you're trying to block the straight one and work the strike, those two strike rates are phenomenal. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, it, it, when, he, when the ball was on the stumps, he, he did a good job. But generally, if it was off the stumps, he was still swinging. You know, that's just in his nature. And I said to him, I said, mate, if it's not on your stumps, swing, but try and keep it on the ground. That's, but how he interprets that, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to speak English and, and his English wasn't great. But he, he just said, yeah, 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 yeah. But when, when that... Um, when that final over came, that was when it was, was crucial of, of well, to, to be honest, Graham, when, when we were leading up, we were probably five overs out um, and we're still needing 50 something. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, we can do this. We can do this. I, I kept saying to him, mate, we can do this. And um, I, I, just, I just said to him, just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Nothing stupid. Anyway, um, I said, you've got to run these ones hard. You've got to run these, uh, you know, twos and the threes and stuff like that, okay? So I said, just listen to my call. So I was trying to guide him through the whole situation, but you don't know how much sinks in with him because it's, English is his second language. So that was, that was interesting in itself, you know, knowing the belief in me went from oh, a bit of fun, you know what I mean? Still trying to win, obviously, don't get me wrong. When I said that to Chris Reed, when he still needed 120 of 12 overs, um, I, I desperately wanted to win. And I, I, thought, I thought at the time, all we need is a couple of boundaries and over, bit of luck. And if I'm here at the end, we, we've got a chance. That's, that's exactly what I thought. But you never know until you take it deeper. Okay, and as a cricketer, what I am always telling people, take it deeper, take it deeper into the innings. You never know until you sort of three, four overs out, then you can assess. You might need 
16 and over. Now in, in T20, that's a gettable, isn't it? Yep. You know, 16 and over, but, but we needed 10s or 12s at the time in the last three overs. And so we were up with the rate for a fair bit of the time. And um, I just thought when we were three overs out, yes, we can do this. We can do this. I'm sure we can. And I kept saying to Sammy, just keep your head, keep your head. And then it came down to that last over. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. Charlie Shrek was the bowler, bless him. Um, what do you remember of those final six deliveries? I think the last ball you needed three, um, but you weren't going to mess around with that. What do you remember of that final uh, last over? I tell you what, the first few balls, um, I can't remember too much, but I, I remember vividly getting back on strike um, during that over because I wanted to be there for the last couple of balls, obviously. Um, and I remember Reed holding it all up and calling Shrek over. And this is, this is the last ball of the, uh, of the over, right? We're needing three. So we just needed a four. And um, so Sammy comes down and we meet in the middle and, and Reed's hold of proceedings and he calls Shrek over. And Sammy's trying to talk to me and he's going, what do you think? What do you think? You know, and I'm going, shh, 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 shh. Hold on, hold on. So what I was doing was watching what Reed and um, Charlie Shrek was uh, talking. So I'm trying to lip read and stuff like that because they were whispering, okay? And I'm trying to keep Mohammed Sammy quiet at this end. And I could see Charlie Shrek goes, well, I, I could bowl a wide, um, I could bowl a, a Yorker. And um, then uh, Reed goes, well, then what if, what if he laps you, you know? Uh, do you want the guy back or do you want to bring up? And they were talking like this. And then Tra Charlie Shrek says, okay, um, why don't I bowl a wide Yorker to the big boundary? And I knew that one side was, was a bigger boundary, um, uh, which was my offside, okay? So when, when, uh, when Reed had said, yeah, yeah, good shout, okay? So when Reed had like, done that, I said to Sammy, I said, right, be ready to run here, bud, okay? He went back, and so what I was expecting was a wide Yorker outside off, okay, to the big boundary. So what I did was, as he was running into to bowl, as he got to the umpire, I stepped back and across to outside off stump. And I was hoping I'd get into some sort of, you know, try and make that ball, that Yorker. Because he was pretty good at bowling Yorkers, Charlie Shrek. He probably didn't quite get this one right. It was probably not quite a, a Yorker, but it wasn't far off. But I made it into a half volley because I went right back into my crease. And... I just tried to hit it straight, but I, with, with the arc, it sort of went towards mid on. And I was watching this ball sail because I didn't quite get it out of the panties. I, I got it okay. Uh, um, and it was sailing. And it, what it was doing in the air was it, it was curving towards mid on to, to the player. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, and I was going, get over, get over, get over. And when I saw the, the player do this, and he, then he gave up, and it went over like about 10 rows or something, I've gone, Oh, how good is this? And Muhammad Sammy just came and grabbed me. And yeah, it was, um, it was an amazing feel. I, I can't explain it because at the time I was so pumped, but I wasn't, I was excited, but I wasn't really showing it. I was just sort of, oh, I've actually done that. We've actually won, you know, because we were in that focused frame for the last 12 overs trying to, nut a way out how to get this team over the line. That was really, really um, like it just took a lot of focus and um, how, how you're trying to work a plan with the bowlers and the field and, you know, which way you can get off strike and how you can manage your partner and all these sort of things are going through your head. And it was, it was not easy. And of course that turned out to be Chris's last white ball game in, in charge of the side. And of course it, it finished with a trophy um, what do you remember of the celebrations? Oh, look, the celebration was actually stuffed because I didn't eat a thing all day, okay? And um, so everything was shut. So we were trying to find bars and what have you. And uh, we, we obviously had a really good time in the change rooms. But then we had to leave and go back to the hotel, pack our gear up because we were on our way up to Durham. 
uh, for a championship game after that. And I'll, I'll never forget, we all sort of try to find a bars and, and places to go and celebrate. But we ended up at the hotel and we had a really good time then. It was great to be all together. And But the, the, amazing, the amazing feeling of knowing that we had achieved that over the season that was, we felt disappointing for our squad was such a, a huge relief, you know. And for someone like Chris... You know, it was a really nice way to send him off after he'd been, you know, the captain for such a long time. And obviously, you know, Morsey, uh, being a wonderful coach, it was, was good from, from his perspective. But, yeah, I was just so proud to be not only the guy to, to win the game, but to be a part of that because it had been a disappointing year up until then. Okay. And just to, um, before we come to the end, let's move on to 2009 because it went from strength to strength and um, and from that middle part of 2008 and the disappointment of the T20, 2009, Sussex, no doubt, the best white ball uh, side in the country and squad. And, and what a season 2009 was with, again, trophies galore. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, we just, we try to carry on those, those same roles and trying to, uh, and I think, you know, the younger guys, um, you know, your Yardies, your Priors and, and people like that were, were now established proper players, you know, and they were, they were dominating in their own right. And you, you, we had a really good bowling attack. And I think whenever you're doing well, your bowling attack's very good. And that was, that was huge. Us batters, we knew our roles. We, we basically took on the opposition in our own ways. But um, like I said before, I think what we did was we worked out a plan and we executed those plans, both individually and as a team. And when you do that, you have a, a very good time of, of succeeding. Uh, and, and obviously, um, 12 years at the club was a long, long time. You became a huge favourite and, and very popular. And in that time, obviously, got a lot of friends, obviously, with spectators, other players, sponsors, uh, and everything else. And I'm sure being such a key part in your life that you look back at all of that with fondness. Yeah, I, I do. Because some of those uh, sponsors are actually friends of mine, you know. And the thing I liked about Sussex was that, yes, we call it a family, but it was. It was like, uh, it's not like your big clubs like your Surreys and your Lancashires and even here in Western Australia. You don't mix and mingle with the sponsors like you do at Sussex, you know, and that there, I personally take my hat off to the sponsors. I personally take my hat off to, to Peter Moores also incorporating a really good um, conduit between the sponsors that the, and the players. And it, it worked well. Yes, we were a, a small club and we are a small club, but it's one of those things where, I still keep in contact with uh, not only some of the players, but also ex-sponsors and some are still sponsors today. And uh, that's, that's how much, you know, we, we always have a bit of banter on Facebook or, or whatever, but I personally uh, know that Sussex is one of the best times of my life, uh, not only as cricket, but my family. Like my wife and my two boys loved it there. You know, Ashton now is 13. He was only a baby then, like a real baby. And, and Jaden now is doing well with his cricket. And he was coming through playing for Sussex uh, Juniors, you know. Um, but we, uh, we would love to come back there. We, we really would. But, um, yeah, we, we really are uh, excited. And hopefully one day, hopefully one day I'll be back. Um, because we've got so many fond memories. We love the place. We love Brighton and Hove. And, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure time will tell uh, what happens. Well, Maz, it's been great chatting. It was a great to witness pretty much all of your career with uh, Sussex. Uh, much missed, uh, much loved. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, mate. And, yeah, please uh, pass my best on to all the, the players. Um, even the, the people, the staff at, at the club um, were just wonderful. You know, there's probably a, a, a lot of new faces there. But I used to go into the um, offices there and go and have a chat to people. And, uh, you know, I try to have that personable approach, not only with the players, but also with the sponsors, but also with the ground staff. I mean, they were just awesome. And even the admin staff, you know, just to try and, I suppose, 
r recognise that, you know, it shouldn't just be players um, and the admin or players and sponsors. I think that, you know, everyone can integrate together. And I actually enjoyed that. I loved catching up with people. And there's so many good people at that club that I hope one day, and I know my wife is very keen, um, hope one day we'll come back.